This is Pet Life Radio. Let's talk pets. And good morning, good afternoon, wherever the case may be. You are here live with Dr. Jeff Werber, your host for the next 30 minutes here on Pet Life Radio's live call-in show. Ask the Vets with Dr. Jeff, and we are here for you. We are here for your pets. We want to hear anything you want to talk about. And, uh, you know, it's, 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 it's great to have this free advice. And as I say, and, and you've got to get used to it, the new wave, telemedicine, telehealth. And I'm involved in LiveDVM.com. We hope you're all signed up by now. Because when you need it, you don't want to sit there and start signing up. You already want to be a member. It's not going to cost you a dime to join. And um, it is the, the best thing. You'll be able to talk to live doctors at any time during the day instead of panicking and rushing to that emergency. Classic example. Oh, I'm sorry, but the doctors are in surgery right now or the doctors are seeing patients right now. Well, that millennial doesn't want to wait. That millennial wants to talk to somebody now. So um, live DVM is the answer. And also we're here thanks to Paw Fume. Paw Fume with along with Dr. Jeff Werber a great line of wellness products for your pets to keep them looking and smelling amazingly good. As I said, my ear cleaner was the number one ear cleaner at Petco for, for a number of years. My skin and coat emollient spray is just ideal and there's nothing like it. And talk about smell. You're going to want to spray it on your dog, even if they don't have dry skin, just because it smells so darn good. And um, pH balance, you know, really, really good stuff. You can go on to perfumepremium.com. And if you put down in the discount code, Dr. Jeff, you will receive 20% off your purchases. You just can't beat that. That's fantastic. And this is stuff you won't even find at your regular vet hospital. So, you know, there you go. It's fantastic stuff. So anyway, usually, as you know, I like to start the show by going through, you know, the AHA, American Animal Hospital Association, and the AVMA, the American Veterinary Medical Association, briefs and talking about what's new. But today we're going to do a little different pattern because we have a fantastic guest with us today. She is remarkable. And what's so remarkable is she's only graduated vet school two years ago, which is amazing. Her name is Dr. Rebecca Hartfield. She is a mixed animal practitioner in Oklahoma. I never even heard of this town, Cushing, Oklahoma, to be exact. And she's from Bridgeport, Texas. I haven't heard of Bridgeport either. So there you go. <laughs> you go know, up. In Los Angeles, you just don't get around too much. But you know, really cool. We're gonna, you know, get her story. Uh, we talked to her in just a minute. But uh, she is mixed animal practitioner, which is amazing, especially for a woman, a young woman. And she works. Uh, she listen to this. This this. I thought I have a lot of animals. People say, "Oh my God, you must have a big house." And I said, "Well, I kind of have a nice house." But here she is: eight horses, seventy-five cows, three bulls, ten dogs, three cats, and a goat and a pig. And the reason, one of the reasons we're here is just to talk about that, this amazing story. But I think what Rebecca is doing for the future of veterinary medicine is amazing. And I'm going to hold up a book here you can see, and it's called Rosie the Pig. And it's a book that she's going to tell us all about and why she started writing the series of books about her experiences as a mixed animal doc. And if you hear noise in the background, that's what my grandkids, don't worry, they're sometimes obnoxious, but they're really cute. So to get a hold of us and to talk to me, to Dr. Dr. Rebecca, a number of ways to do it. First of all, the good old fashioned way. Give us a call. 877-385-8882. Once again, 877-385-8882. Uh, you can also join us live on our Google Hangouts, but the best way to do it, the best, the best way to do it. You can text me, just go on to petliferadio.com and you can send me an email. It'll come to me immediately, but I like the Google Hangouts better. And that is you get to see us. We get to see you. We get to see your pet. If it's not a horse and it can fit in your lap, that's even better. But anyway, give us a call because if you have any questions, now's the time to, to call and ask. So anyway, Rebecca, so Hi. you are a mixed animal practitioner. Clearly, I went to Davis and you graduated two years ago. I graduated uh, oh God, 34 years ago. But how did your journey start? Are you one of those crazy kids like I was that wanted to be a vet ever since like she was little? Unfortunately not. My path started a little bit differently. Uh, I actually didn't grow up wanting to be a veterinarian. I uh, rode horses and was at my grandparents all the time, you know, with their cattle and helping them with with all of that. But I didn't really decide I wanted to go to vet school until I was about, you know, like 22, 23. Wow. My husband said, hey, you're really good at this because I was a veterinary technician at the time and riding horses as well. And said, you're really good at this. I think you should go to, to vet school. And it'd be cool to call you doctor too. And I was like, uh, <laughs> I don't know about that. School's just not for me. 
But after, you know, working with some amazing veterinarians like, you know, like yourself and being around that environment, I fell in love with it. And I decided, you know, I think I can do this. So applied to veterinary school. Didn't get in my first time, but I did get in the second time at Oklahoma State University. And I love what I do. Well, just so you know, so you don't feel too badly, you know, back in the day when I was applying, if you had a vet school in your state and we had Davis in California, you, we could not apply anywhere else. And they didn't have like Ross and they didn't have St. George's, you know, so you couldn't leave the country to another accredited right. school. It was the, for me, it was Davis or bust. The average accepted student at Davis applied three times. That was average. And genius Jeffrey applied four. So just <laughs> so you don't feel badly, you know, but uh, again, actually, I tell the story after my third rejection, I went up to talk to the dean. What else can I do? I mean, I, had, I was a master's program. I was getting straight A's in that. I had worked. I had 3000 hours of experience by the time I applied. Right. And he said to me, he says, I think I have to tell you, you will not get into veterinary school at UC Davis. You should think of something else. <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> Fortunately, I didn't listen to him. And, yeah. uh, and here I am 30 plus no. years later. So that's, tell me that's about what I try to encourage kids and some of the students that come and volunteer for me and everything is don't give up. If this is truly what you want to do, don't let other people that tell you, no, you're not good enough. Just keep trying. They'll eventually let you in. <laughs> right. And that is the case. So tell me about, first of all, I read Rosie. Rosie, it's a great story. Thank and you. I know there's more coming. We have pistol coming up. And then you, it says one out of six. So I'm curious to learn what your remaining Correct. four are going to be. But what prompted you? Here's Rosie the pig to write these really geared for kids, people that, that would, would think they would love this profession. And as you know, veterinary medicine right now is getting a tough rap. To go to school, it's very expensive. The average accepted student nationwide has $175,000 debt. Sometimes the practices are being gobbled up. The good practices are being gobbled up by corporate. Not that it's a bad thing, as I sold to corporate this past year. By the way, loving it. Yes. <laughs> I'm working the same, but I don't have any headaches. It's fantastic. So anyway, what started this idea? Plus, especially because you're only out two years. That's amazing. Thank you. Well, it all started my fourth year of veterinary school. And I knew I, when I graduated, you know, I knew I wanted to work in a mixed animal practice, but I knew I wanted to to do something more with my DVM. And so me and my sister had actually gotten together and she needed a, a project for her last year of graphic design school. So we were brainstorming and thinking of things for, for to brand me in some way, but also to help her with her project. And about that same time, a friend of mine called and said, hey, my eight-year-old daughter wants to go to vet school. What's a good book for her to start reading now and eventually, you know, encourage her to go to vet school and continue that dream? So I started looking and researching and there was just nothing that I found that I truly just loved and wanted to promote, you know, and to recommend to her. So that's when I called my sister and I said, hey, let's write a children's book. I think that this would be perfect. And so again, kind of around that same time, everything just fell into place. And my niece, Abby, happened to be here for Thanksgiving and my pig, Rosie, was sick. And so we went out, we did an exam on Rosie. I taught her about the tools that we use at the clinic. And, and then we, you know, treated her. And that's where the story Rosie the pig came from. So seeing her learn through that was just amazing. No, is it, what I love about this book is, as you said, so Abby's there and Rosie is sick, but it's not just a story, but it Correct. actually is interactive. What it does, and, and I'm going to show you a page here. So the doc talks about all these instruments that we're going to use, you know, like for a, to examine. For example, what can we look into Rosie's ears, nose, and throat? Which using which tool? All right. And, you know, so one of the things she has is a flashlight. And then she talks about thumb forceps and, and all the things that we may need to do an exam to help. Scissors, of course, tape, stethoscope, what's a stethoscope? Not only that, what she does is because some of these words are, are a little difficult to read, she basically will sound them out. So it's so easy for a kid to understand, to learn like a syringe. You know, they see that they were sci You know what? So <laughs> exactly. what it does is so she has it, so it's spelled S-I-R-E-N-J, syringe. So I think it's really amazing. And then at the end of the book, she does like a review. So it really does help kids not only learn about what we do, how amazing it is, how fantastic animals are, but it also really teaches them the art of what we're going to do. So if it's something they want, they think they want to do for their career, then it's a great way to start. And as I mentioned, we got Pistol coming up next. And then it says, I see that you have a series one out of six. So I think you've already pre-planned the others, I yeah. hope. 
Yes. So I'm really excited about Pistol, of course. It uh-huh. comes out next week and we will be having, if anyone happens to be in Stillwater, Oklahoma, we're having a launch party at Stillwater Mill. And Pistol the Horse is about a horse that, and it's a true story. All the stories are true. We go out into the pasture and Abby and Julian find that Pistol is hurt. And so they have to take Pistol to Dr. H and we do an exam. And the cool part about this book, so the quiz part in the middle is going to be learning about the parts of the horse. And so I'm really excited about that. And then at the end, of course, another quiz to sum it up. And then my next book in the series is Rowdy the Dog. And then, of course, I'm going to have a story about a cat, a cow, and a goat to finish off the series. That's great. So, um, you know, a couple of things. First of all, my knowledge of some large animal medicine is, is oh, well, you could probably fit in a thimble. I know I grew up small animal, dog and cat all the way. I actually do have a Russian dwarf hamster who is absolutely adorable. But I have four dogs, had five. One we had to put to sleep uh, last year and six cats. So I'm, I'm, I'm a cr- pretty crazy vet as well. But I have to tell you a couple of funny stories. I was very good at what I did, especially with my hands. And every time I went through a rotation at school, a large animal rotation, the commissions heard that I really am just going to go to Beverly Hills, California and be and book it. They said, are you kidding? You should be a cow vet. You should be a horse vet. And I, yeah. and I did. I worked with an equine surgeon for a number of years, and I had the most amazing experience. And I think that's what made me so comfortable around them. But what's it like for a young woman to be working with, you know, house bulls, no less, and, and cows and horses? You know, I remember the first time I went to a ranch and it was a dairy farm and there was off in the distance, there was a bull all by himself in a corral way far away. And, and I said, go ahead, can we go see the bull? Said, you don't want to go near this bull. And that's where yeah. I found out that these bulls, first of all, they're syndicated for a lot of money. I mean, they're very, very expensive. You wouldn't even back then it was like three million. Now it's probably ten million. Who knows? But they are nasty, nasty animals, and, they, uh, and that's why they have to stay away from us because nobody wants to go near them anyway. Yeah. But uh, what's it like physically to work with these animals? Physically, it's pretty tough. I feel like I'm a pretty in shape person, but you know you have to act a little tougher when you're working with large animals, not just because of what you're working with, but because you're trying to you know. Let uh, Mr. Farmer, Mr. Rancher know that you can do this job and you don't need a man to step in and save you. And so I know a few weeks ago I had a, a cow that came in and I was pulling that calf and I was spent. I was done, but I was almost there. And I was like, man, I should tap out right now. But I was like, nope, I got to I got to man up and I got to do this. And so I was able to, to finish the job. But I had to I had to do that so I could prove myself even further you know, to people surrounding me. <laughs> so now, now, okay. So at OSU, so I, one of my colleagues who used to work for me, now she works with another company, still in the veterinary world. She graduated Oklahoma State and actually did a master's in equine medicine. But what, in your class, how many students were in your class when you graduated? There was 88 students. Okay. So of the 88, how many of them were women going into some sort of mixed or large animal practice? I think there was only about maybe 20 of us. We had a pretty big class of women that wanted yeah, to. Yeah, it usually is. Mm-hmm. You know, just so everybody knows, I graduated in 1984, 34 years ago at UC Davis. I was the last class to have more men than women. Class of 85 was exactly at 128. Class the next year was 64, 64, exactly 50, 50. And now it's 80% women. My class had like 10 guys, like 10 or 11 guys in it, and the rest were women. Yeah, yeah no, it's it's crazy. And uh, I think that's one of the issues is that, you know, from a life standpoint, it is often difficult for these guys to, I mean, you couldn't, let's put this, as an employee veterinarian, it would be very hard to live where I live and support a family. And it's sad. Yeah. It really is. And what is sad is that to get to veterinary medicine takes tons of brains and mm-hmm. hard work. And you would, you know, that should be rewarded. And, it, you know, it's, it's very challenging. So you're now do you also all the animals come to the clinic or you also, you know, are out in the van and the truck and going out and seeing animals on farms and ranches? At our clinic, we have um, quite a few farm calls that we do. I mostly stay at the clinic doing all the in-house stuff because we're just so busy. But I do try to make evening farm calls to go here and there. We don't have an emergency service at our clinic, so we're just there eight to six every day and then on the weekends. But I do quite a few farm calls. I I enjoy them. I like getting out of the clinic and doing something different, but we do stay pretty busy at the clinic. And on these calls that you get, like I said, you close the clinic uh, in the evening. How many calls come in after hours? 
Is it a lot? Is it a few? Quite a few, but but because we don't do emergency, we actually refer a lot of our stuff to Oklahoma State University because we're very close to the school. But if you're there after hours, if I'm there doing stuff, following up on stuff, then the phone is just constantly ringing. Right, right. Try to refer everything to Oklahoma State for that. Yeah, we should get some large animal vets on live DVM because you you could uh, uh, it could be a big boom because you know what oh, we yeah. find, especially in small animal medicine, is that eighty percent of emergencies aren't. You know, people panic, something's yeah. going on, and nothing that you can't handle on a phone, a conversation, a video chat like we're doing right now, exactly. and uh, and um, you know just save the client a ton of money, a lot of anxiety, a lot of angst, and uh, no, it's uh, it's a great way to go. Anyway, Rebecca, don't go away. We're going to come back out of this break, and we're going to finish talking pets, talk animals, and I'd love to hear some really cool stories about some of the, I'll tell you one of my large animal stories. Okay. Probably doesn't compare to what you do, but it was kind of cool at the time. All right, <laughs> don't go away, everybody. We'll be back after these short words. Stay tuned here on Pet Life Radio's Ask the Vet Talk. We'll be right back, right after these messages. Stay tuned. We'd like to thank our sponsor for this episode. Rover.com. Rover, the dog people. It's the largest network of five-star pet sitters and dog walkers in North America. If you have dogs, and like me, you're working during the day and can't get home to walk your fur babies, you can just use the Rover app on your Android or iPhone and find a five-star dog walker. Book them, favorite them, and even pay them all through the app. And I know if I'm going away for the weekend or even taking a five-day cruise, I can use the same Rover app to book a pet sitter. By using Rover, my dog walker or pet sitter is trusted, background checked, and is backed by Rover's premium insurance and 24-7 support. And if my dog and I want to meet my pet sitter or dog walker beforehand, we can do that too with a free meet and greet. I personally like that I can get pictures of my dog, a map of her walk, and updates right on the app. It's so cool. We have a special offer for Pet Life Radio listeners, too. Get $25 off your first booking by going to rover.com forward slash Pet Life Radio. Pet Life Radio is all one word. And use the promo code Pet Life Radio. So once again, go to rover.com forward slash Pet Life Radio. Pet Life Radio is all one word. And use promo code Pet Life Radio. Three words for the code and get $25 off your first booking. It's a awesome deal. You know that feeling when you go to clean the litter box and it's a complete disaster? Yeah, we've got you covered. Introducing World's Best Cat Litter Zero Mess, the advanced litter that gives you two times better clumping and more odor control with less litter. Zero Mess combines the concentrated power of corn with super absorbent plant fibers. Translation, scoop once and you're done. Find it at a pet store near you and save $2. Visit www.saveonworldsbest.com. When Helen Brown ran away to New York City five years ago, she had no idea that a homeless cat with a punk rock haircut and enough catitude to light up the Empire State Building would be the one to teach her the true meaning of love and a forever home. In the tradition of her internationally best-selling memoir, Cleo, Helen Brown's Bono, The Amazing Story of a Rescue Cat Who Inspired a Community, is a heartwarming true story about a woman without an anchor a homeless cat without much hope, and finding a forever home in the city that never sleeps. Modern Cat Magazine calls Bono an uplifting tale about how everyone deserves love and a second chance. Bono by Helen Brown is on sale now everywhere. Does your dog itch, scratch, stink, or shed like crazy? Come to Dynavite for help. Order a 90-day supply of Dynavite. Dynavite for life. Pick up two tubes of Doggo Suds. Get the third tube free. Peppermint, tea tree, lavender, Doggo Sud Shampoo. Made with all natural coconut, jojoba, aloe. Great for healthy skin and soft, shiny coats. But no itchy, harsh chemicals. Lather up, rinse away. Try Doggo Suds. Buy two, get one free. At Dynavite.com. D-I-N-O-V-I-T-E dot com. Let's talk pets. Let's talk pets. On Pet Life Radio. Pet Life Radio. Pet Life Radio. Dot com. <laughs> And welcome back. You're live with Dr. Jeff Werber here with Dr. Rebecca Hartfield, a mixed animal practitioner from Cushing, Oklahoma. And I'm here talking about her new book, Rosie the Well, her older book, Rosie the Pig, new book coming out, Pistol the Horse. 
And we're going to have four more after that. Looking forward. Fantastic. Great children's books. Any, great for anyone who has a kid who is thinking about a career in veterinary medicine, a career working with animals. It really is. It's They're fun, they're cute, and they're educational at the same time. So they'll walk away with a lot of information. So um, anyway, when, before the break, we were just talking about what it's like to be a large animal practitioner and be a woman and a young woman just graduating vet school a couple of years ago. And, uh, you know, it's got to be pretty taxing. And the only you know thing, I, I've been small animal my whole life. I, I knew when I was a kid, I was going to be a, a vet and I knew I was going to work on dogs and cats and, and very happily doing that. But I, uh, I did have, you know, some equine experience before vet school. I worked with a major equine surgeon, which helped me a lot because when I was on equine ambulatory, I had to make up a, a week because I had missed a week and it was equine ambulatory. And we used to get a lot of our residents were from Australia. And uh, Australians are big into the, in the equine world, and they do uh, you know a lot of equine repro reproduction and um, medicine, and they have a lot of farms out there. And you know some of the schools in the U.S. have a really great reputation, so we would get a lot of Aussies. And I'm sure it's no secret that Aussies like to party, especially they like to have their beer. So it was so great working with these guys because I was the only student. You know, usually when you go on these groups, you have like three, four, five, six students at a time. I was the only one. I was doing all the work. They were kicking back, having me you know sew up these horses, do whatever I had to do. And it was the best time. And of course, on the way back to campus, we would stop at the pub and uh, <laughs> life was grand. My big story was I was at a, a kid's, like a petting zoo thing. And they used to come, animals were one of these traveling petting zoos. And they brought a lot of these animals in from local farms. And um, I'm looking at this goat and this goat clearly was about to burst. So I said, to him, you know, she doesn't look really good. I think you should put her back in the truck. So they put her back in the truck and I kept going back and checking on her. Then all of a sudden, you know, she starts the birthing process. She's got this, this big sack, this placenta is hanging down. She is struggling, struggling. And I'm watching this in a few minutes later. I said, no, she's having a tough time. Up rolls the sleeve. No, no glove. I, I was at this party. What am I going to do? So I go up there and sure enough, I could feel the feet. It's breech. And I, I'm working and working. I finally pull this kid goat out. And, uh, you know, for a while, it's a little wobbly. It's amazing how fast they get to their feet. And we everyone, all these kids are watching. That was the best part of this whole thing, was seeing me <laughs> deliver a live goat. But yeah. when it even got better, two minutes later, she starts bearing down again. She had twins. Yeah. And it's not uncommon for goats to have twins. Anyway, it was so much fun. That's And that was about 25 years ago. That's the last time I touched a goat. So uh, <laughs> anyway... <laughs> So oh tell me, when, you, when, you're, when you're on ambulatory, when you're running around, when you have animals coming, what what kind of stuff do you see? Oh, gosh, I see everything. So I'll see goats, pigs, horses, cows, bulls, anything. The only thing that I won't see is birds. I'm terrified of birds. So <laughs> someone called one day and said, hey, I have this chicken. And I said, nope, sorry, you're going to have to go somewhere else. <laughs> so I don't do reptiles either. I'm a little bit terrified of those. So I try to stick with my main you know, my main uh, group of animals there, but birds, birds, not so much. Now, now are you doing surgery too, or mostly medicine? Like, would you do a colic? Would you, uh, you know, if you have to do something major for a cow, would you go in surgically in the belly? So I've done a few uh, C-sections on, on cows, goats. I haven't done one on a pig yet, but I love surgery. I think if I was going to do everything over again, I might've done a residency in surgery. I do a lot of surgery on small animals, not so much uh, horses, but uh, I'll jump in there and do whatever's needed for a, for a large animal. Cow. No, I, yeah. It's so uh, I obviously do a lot of surgery, but this you got to see, I don't know if you can see it. I'm going to show, show it up close. That yeah. is bacon. <laughs> and bacon, bacon came into me, little pot-bellied pig that we neutered, and yep. it was the coolest thing because you know, you know where he was. He wasn't on a surgery table when I neutered him. He was on my technician's lap, kind of oh, sitting there like that. He was so comfortable that way. We had him on gas, and he was so cute. It was unbelievable. And I think you know, for me to sit in there and work with a little pig, I know years ago when the, the, the thought was popular pigs would become really popular. I went to a, you know one of the seminars, one of the big conferences, spent an entire day, an entire day on practically pigs, thinking, okay, I'm gonna be ready. With these are gonna come in, I'm gonna be all set to go. That year I saw one all year. <laughs> <laughs> and clearly they never really hit big in the cities, you know, except yeah. for maybe George yeah. Clooney, who's, who's, you know, talks about his pot belly pig, but uh, we don't see it. Uh, and then, this is, you're really grossed out. I had a family, it was in a Mexican family and they had a, came in with their little pot belly pig. It was kind of cute, but I would take care of their dogs and I would sell their dogs. And they, I know about two years later, they came in again with the dog and I said, wait, wait, I haven't seen whatever happened to that pot belly pig. Here's the answer. Oh, hell, it got too big. So we killed her and ate her. <laughs> Well, it's the circle of life. <laughs> right, right. So, so much for really that love for a pet. 
But yeah, uh, yeah. you know, no, that is really funny. So, you know, it's funny you say surgery. I, because it took me so long to get into vet school, I was already married. My first kid was born in vet school. There was no way my wife was going to let me, you know, start doing another four-year residency. So I went straight to work. But, you know, hindsight, what I love the most about my practice is the relationships. You know, from when I say I have clients for 30 years and mm-hmm. through many of many, many pets, and I have so much fun in an exam room getting to really know my patients and my clients. Whereas in, in surgery, you're, you're locked up in that surgical suite for hours a day. You, you really, you only you're really, you know, interacting with your staff and of course, uh, an anesthetized pet. It's just, to me, it wasn't the same. So I'm almost glad because I had, I, had I gotten vet school right away, I definitely would have done a surgical residence. Yeah. And I love surgery and I do a lot of it, but man, I'm thrilled doing what I do. Plus yeah, I love- getting out as you're trying to do and do more with your degree than just right. be a doctor. Right. And I love, I love my clients. They're so supportive of what I'm doing and they think it's so cool that, that I'm going and taking my books to schools and doing different things. And, and so they're really excited, excited for me, but we have such a good time and and I just love my clients. And of course, a lot of them give me really good stories for my blogs too. So (laughs) So that makes sense. No, no, it's great. And you got to keep doing it. You know, we need more of it. We need more education. We need more people to glorify this amazing profession. I think it's the best profession on the planet, you know, to be able, and I, and this one, I I lecture at my high school every year and they have a big career day. And of course I talk about veterinary medicine. And, you know, one of the things I try to tell kids to do is whatever your passion is, follow your passion. I I'm amazed actually that I have classmates going back to my reunions that are practicing two days a week or, or actually went on to different things. The only thing I can think of is they didn't necessarily find their passion. And when you do something you love to do every day, it's pretty hard to burn out. When you do things that you don't like doing every day, it's, it is, you know, pretty easy to burn out. So I think it's really important. So Rebecca, next up is pistol. Uh, For more information, I, people can go find you on drheartfield.com. And you said you have a blog too. I do. I have okay. tried to do weekly blogs about different cases that I have, like we have a chat room. or um, funny stories that I have or other things going on here at mine and my husband's crazy ranch life that we have here in Oklahoma. So right. I try to do a little bit of everything on there. But uh, yeah, so you can find Pistol the Horse and you can pre-order that book on drheartfield.com. So I'm really excited about, about Pistol coming out. Uh-huh. And then I'm also was nominated for the American Humane Hero Veterinarian Award. And so you can check out their website. And if you don't mind voting for me, I'd love for your vote there. That's great. You know, I got a, I used to be a spokesperson for American Humane back in the day. And uh, anyway, um, I have the American Humane, it's called the Wear and Caring Award. So uh, no, it's really great to be recognized by these organizations and to do what you do. You know, I remember one of the highlights, I was a, a Speaker of the Year Award in, at the North American Veterinary Conference. These are really great things, and it just helps propel your career. And here, so um, first, this is coming from Missy. Dr. H is the best. Well, other than Doc, but you'll probably agree with that. My question is that they tested her German Shepherd for tick fever, Ehrlichia, it says Alicia, Ehrlichia, or something along those days, safe to breed my girl now. Well, first of all, you want to make sure that we're negative. In fact, when it comes to a lot of these breeding things, Ehrlichia, Babesiosis, and um, that they are, any of the tick-borne diseases are potentially transmittable. Uh, you obviously need the bite, but you, what, what, um, I'm sure that your dog has probably been on doxycycline. The good news is when they're diagnosed, they're very easy to treat. They respond very well. Brucellosis is another one. Um, in fact, if it's a really official breeding, a lot of the breeders of, or, or a lot of the, the owners of the male or the female want to make sure that your dog is not brucella positive. They want to make sure that there's no brucellosis because, again, these things can be transmitted. But if, you know, once the treatment is done with your shepherd, then it is a safe to breed. And uh, of, of course, you should be on some sort of tick prevention this time of year, especially. There's some great ones out there. Uh, try to avoid the over-the-counter stuff, okay? And the reason, not that some of them are not safe. They are safe. But one of the things we're seeing with a number of the over-the-counter products, especially fipronil and imidacloprid, fantastic products in the past, we're seeing in the lab, we're seeing what we call, the experts like to call the R word, which is resistance. So we're getting a lot of resistance. There are not a lot of newer products out there. Speak to your veterinarian. Uh, very good ones. Some topical, some oral, whatever you, you, know, you seem to prefer for your pets. If you have small children in the house, you might want to go with the orals. If you have a very fractious animal you can't get near, like a tough cat, definitely go with the topicals. And um, But anyway, the, as far as breeding safety, once they test negative, once the infection is gone, not a problem. And Dr. H will be back in our office tomorrow, I guess, right, Rebecca? Yes, sir. Okay. <laughs> 
Yes, so uh, that's fantastic. So anyway, great to have you all here. Uh, Rebecca, thank you so much. Uh, you, if you want to come back anytime, we can talk about Pistol. Um, Sounds awesome. And uh, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll have you on the show again. And any stories that you would think about blogging, you can share with us. Um, I think we all love to hear it. You know, I'm sure they're so bored with me talking about dogs and cats and small animals. I do give a lot of stuff on other species when it comes to my AVMA and AHA information and, and, and uh, the news briefs. But still, it would be great to, to have you on and, and talk more about some of the experiences of a large animal doc. Plus, if there's anyone out there, just to show that you can be a woman uh, and young and be out there on the farms with these large animals, working with horses and cows. And it, it really is a rewarding profession. And I'm, I'm hoping now already that you have dis- discovered that. And that though you were 22 and you came to the decision, uh, that it was the right one for you. And, you. Uh, and next thing, I can only hope that... Uh, 32 years from now, 33 years from now, when you are going to be 34 to 35 years out, um, that you enjoy what you're doing as much as I still love what I'm doing because it's the best feeling in the world. All right. Thank you for uh, having, thank you for joining me. Everybody, thanks for listening. If you have any questions, you can send them to me. Uh, You can send them directly to uh, Dr. Rebecca at uh, uh, drheartfield.com. And um, that's, that's her site. And uh, your email is what? Oh, it's Rebecca, R-E-B-E-K-A-H, a little unusual spelling, Rebecca at drhartfield.com. And um, uh, once again, I want to thank Paul Fume. And um, if you, uh, for, the, for phenomenal products, remember, in the discount line, and discount code, put down Dr. Jeff, you will get 20% off. Can't beat that. And you're going to love, I promise you, you're going to love these products. And of course, they're guaranteed. If you don't, we'll take them back. And uh, once again, go to Live DBM. Uh, uh, dot com and and register now. It doesn't cost anything to register, and that way, in case you ever need that after hours or that middle of the day call where everybody's busy, we can put you in touch with a real doctor to ask your questions, talk about, do a a a, a video call. Um, it's the best thing. Lastly, follow me on at Dr. Jeff Orber on Instagram. Rebecca, do you have Instagram? Yes, sir. What is Dr. it? Doc at Dr. Hartfield. Okay, at Dr. Hartfield at Dr. Jeff Werber. And uh, we will see you all next week. For anyone in the Las Vegas area, Tuesday morning, catch me on Fox 5. I'll be in Vegas on Fox 5 uh, doing a segment. And then two more weeks later, I'll be back in Vegas and Sacramento doing a bunch more. I will keep you posted. All right. So uh, have a great week, everybody. And uh, thanks all for joining us. Take care. Let's Talk Pets. Every week on demand. Only on PetLifeRadio.com.